Carmen is going to be really good. I'll make it just for you. No, I'm not. No, I'm not going to do Ali Oleo again. I already did that, okay? You have to listen. When I talk to you, you have to listen, okay? I'm getting a little sick and tired of your attitude and the way that you're treating me and the way that you're demanding cooking videos that I don't want to make. I want to make them on my own time, the kind that I want to make. And I, today I want to make carbonara, okay? Ah, uh, Jacob? Oh, hey. Um, so... Yeah, so today we're... We don't have to worry about it. So today we're doing carbonara, which is a delicious pasta from Rome. The only thing with this dish is that it's not vegan nor vegetarian, so if you're one of those people, you'll have to look elsewhere. But I will be making carbonara. This is a, a hearty dish, and it's very simple. It only has a couple ingredients. Where we're going to start, though, is with salting the water. So we want to salt the water quite a good amount. I'm going to do three... Let's just make it four. And this, the amount of salt that you add to this recipe does depend on a couple things. But, for the way that I'm gonna make it, we will need to add a little bit of extra salt. And there's another extremely, extremely important um, thing when you're making carbonara, which is you must heat the plates. So I'm just gonna set my oven on warm, and I'm gonna put my plates in the oven, and you'll see why at the end. And then we gotta prep our ingredients. So, right here I got pancetta. So this is an Italian cured bacon. Quick tip, if your cutting board is moving around, just damp a paper towel a little bit. Fine, so moving around a lot, put a paper towel under it. Doesn't move. It's just insane what you can do. So, we're gonna cut up some pancetta. Now, traditionally, this dish is made with guanciale, and guanciale is cured pork cheek. I find, though, that guanciale is a little too strong. Um, a little too, it's a little too salty, and it's got a little too much of that aged meat taste. And I find pancetta is a little nicer. You can use smoked bacon, but I find that the smoky taste, I mean, it's okay, but You'll definitely like taste sort of maple smoke, whatever, um, in the dish. So the best thing for me is just normal pancetta. It's still traditional, it's still allowed. The only other ingredients are eggs, which we have there, and then black pepper is essential, and then a cheese. Again, traditionally it's pecorino romano, but I also find that to be a little too sharp and strong in this dish. So I just use parmesan. So it's just a, mine's a slightly subtler. We're just going to chop up the pancetta into cubes like this. You want them pretty small. And the reason why is because you want them to, uh, you want to increase the amount of surface area so that when you're cooking them and reducing them, the fat, enough, as much fat as possible, will cook out of them. I'll just do one more good slice. I'm not going to make too much today, but essentially the more that you add, the better. You want like enough so that, this is going to be kind of annoying, so that every bite has a piece of pancetta in it.
Okay, that's probably good. They don't need to all be exactly the same size. Put that center away. And then, so the water is getting close to a boil. I'm just gonna heat up a bit of oil in this pan. You don't need a lot of oil because a lot of the fat that you're gonna get is from the pancetta. But I like to start it in a touch of olive oil. I find that it just makes it a little bit better overall. Not much, just a touch. Get coated around. Then we have our pancetta prepared. I guess I didn't cut these parts wrong. Well. And just prep that over here. So then, the only thing, other thing we need to make is we need to make our egg, egg and cheese mixture. So. The way that we do that is, <laughs> now I'm not great at cracking eggs because I don't like eggs. I don't eat them. Okay. So if you're going to criticize my ability to crack eggs, I'm not interested in your criticism. I'm not interested in your comments. I'm not interested in what you have to say because you're a disgusting egg eater and I don't eat eggs. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to mainly want yolks. <laughs> you mainly want yolks. What I usually do is I do one full egg, one full egg in, but then I don't want too much of the white or the albumin as it's called, because I actually don't want this pasta to have too much sauce. And you really don't want your pastas to be swimming in sauce. That's why you cook your pasta in the sauce and a lot of the water evaporates. You want most of the sauce to cling to the pasta. If you finish your bowl of pasta and there's still a pool of sauce, that's disgusting. That's trash. And then what I do, usually I do one yolk per person. Um, you can, uh, you can do, you can throw in an extra yolk if you want. So what I do is I usually just sort of switch it back and forth. Sometimes this is a little dangerous, the yolk can break, so the yolk just broke there, but that's fine, because I, I mainly got it. And then, I'm just gonna do one more, because I'm not gonna make a lot of pasta today. So again, just let the white sort of, it's kind of disgusting. Let's pull it out. That is actually disgusting. <laughs> That is actually quite disgusting, I'm not gonna lie. But it's okay, because it's gonna result in a delicious pasta. Boom, egg's done. No shells. An excellent egg cracking job. Despite the fact that I don't eat eggs. Except when they're in another recipe. You want to give your hands a good wash. Then what you're gonna add to these eggs is a hell of a lot of cheese and black pepper. But first, our oil starting to get pretty good, and it's not on a very high temp, it's just on two right now. And I might just get a little hotter while I get my cheese out. Right, cheese. So you can see mostly yolk. And also the yolk will make it a richer and more flavorful sauce. Because yolk is always more tasty than the white. Thinner grater. But then first I'm just gonna test one of these bits of pancetta. So we see it's sizzling. And I don't want them to sear. I'm sweating the pancetta, which means that I'm cooking it to release the fat. I don't want.
want these to get crispy right away. If they get crispy right away, they're gonna seal in and none of their fat is gonna release. What I want is as much fat as possible. So they're just sizzling a little bit. So I might even just adjust the heat a tiny bit more. Then I'm just gonna to start to grate. So this grater is nice because you can kind of just suspend it on here. And honestly, you can put a lot of cheese in here. And the reason why I'm going to have to add a bit of salt to this carbonara, and if you watch a lot of other carbonara recipes, they'll always say don't add salt. But usually it actually does need salt. And what happens is that you have a bland end result. And the reason why is because they're telling you not to use salt if you're using guanciale and pecorino romano. Those are way saltier than pancetta and parmesan. So I actually will add a bit of salt even to this mixture right here. Once I'm done here, that's looking pretty good. A healthy, oh, see that's too fine. I don't want it fine, I wanna, there you go. And you never want just fine, fine pepper. You wanna get those big chunks of pepper. And for me, I love a lot of pepper in this recipe. The reason why you need the pepper is because the other components of this dish, especially the eggs and the cheese, are very fatty. So you need some sharp flavors to uh, sort of cut through. So the pepper does that. So for me, that's a good, uh, for some people, it's probably a lot of pepper. I really like that amount. Now the water's boiling. So I'm gonna grab my pasta. So this is not a super fancy pasta, but it's bronze dye extruded. Or you'll see often you'll see trafilato al bronzo. And the thing is that cheap pasta is extruded through Teflon. And when you extrude it through bronze, I don't know if we'll be able to catch this, but it has a slightly rougher exterior. And that rougher exterior means that the sauce can catch onto it more. So when possible, get al bronzo. So I'm not making an insane amount of spaghetti today. Just a decent handful is probably good. Maybe a little bit more than that. Pancetta is just very, very, very softly sizzling away right there. Always constantly adjusting how much pasta. Let's do three more for luck. Put them in. The package says nine minutes. Again, you can never trust that. So I'm going to set this to seven minutes and 30 seconds. I have my plates warming. This is going to cook. I'm gonna move my, so you can see the fat getting released. That's what you want. Look at that. You wanna cook it slowly, so that it has as much time as possible to release the fat. Touch of salt in here. Not much, just a touch. And then whisk it up. Now, you do not ever add cream to carbonara. And that's not just because it's a traditional thing, and it, it is, and Italians will get mad at you. But the reason why is that this dish already has eggs and cheese and pasta as well, which is a lot of, you know, the eggs and cheese are a lot of fatty flavors 
plus you have the fat from the pancetta. If you add cream, it's gonna cover all the other flavors with just fatty, fat flavor. Um, and it will ruin it. You need it to have those sharp flavors, like the sharp salty bacon and the black pepper punching through the richness. That's why the dish is so good. Interestingly, we don't know where this dish comes from. Well, we know where it comes from. It comes from Rome, the Lazio region, but we don't know why it's called carbonara. It's, it comes from the Italian root for exactly the same as in English, carbon um, or charcoal. So uh, some people think that this was a meal for coal miners. It's extremely rich. It'd be great to eat after a day of coal mining. Other people say that it's called sort of charcoal pasta because the little bits of pepper look like little bits of coal in the pasta. Who knows? But it is very good. So this is an extremely traditional Roman uh, recipe. So if, you're, if you ever need to impress a Roman, you make them carbonara. You might want to make it with the traditional guanciale and pecorino romano. But this is pure, this is fully Italian, and no Italian should blame you for making it this way. So I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit because these are starting to get a lot of color, and I just don't want them to have too much color before their fat has been released. So I turn the heat down a little bit. I'm just going to let them keep sizzling away. Now we have to wait a little bit, and there's really nothing else to it. We're just chilling and waiting for the pasta to finish. <laughs> Some of those might be edited. <laughs> Hey, get away from him. The pancetta has gotten pretty close to releasing, you know, most of the fat that it can. And it's now it's starting to get really crispy, which is perfect. There's still like a couple pieces like this one that's mostly fat. Sometimes you can turn them over if you see one side is just pure fat and hasn't really gone on a, a you know, crispy side to it. We do want them crispy in the end, but we don't want them like rocks there, you know, they should have a little bit of chew to them. I don't have enough material. <laughs> just, we could, we could stop filming if you wanted what? at this point. We could, we can wait until there's another thing that you want to say. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. So timer's almost done. Blink. So I'm going to test the pasta. Get one string. Don't worry, you can touch it, it won't burn you. Okay, so still very, very al dente. So actually this package might be accurate, which is surprising. So I'm actually going to give this a full other minute. With carbonara, one key thing is that usually people will tell you to finish cooking your pasta in the sauce and take it out when it's very al dente. And al dente just means it has chew. It just means to the tooth in Italian. With carbonara, your pasta will not cook very much in the pan. So basically you want it at the exact doneness in the pot. The reason why is because we're going to add eggs to the mixture and we can't have it so hot that it scrambles the eggs. So we're actually going to turn the heat off and just pull the pan off the heat, just for a little bit. We'll put it back on, like the element still has a lot of residual heat, but we're just gonna sit it here. And the reason why is we wanna be able to put the pasta into the oil and you know mix it around with the pancetta and then the eggs straight in. And we don't wanna scramble the eggs. You scramble the eggs, you know, the dish is ruined. A little bit of scrambling is okay, but you, you want it to be a cream. So, you know that your water is properly salted if the pasta tastes salty when you, you know, you take it out and taste it. Also, don't throw it against the wall. Don't throw it against the wall or the ceiling. You take it out, you eat it. That's how you know if it's right. 
Who's the first person who threw it at the wall? <laughs> who went, I don't know what to do. Flack. Flack. No, I don't like that person too much. They were trash. Stonk. Wherever they were, they were trash. They were garbage pants. As, uh, as the kids say nowadays. One of the great sayings that the youth has bestowed upon us. Oh, we got a message from Nathaniel. So. So. This package is actually wrong. It's taken 10 minutes plus to get to Al Dente. So I don't know who makes these packages. I don't know who's timing how long these pastas take to cook, but they're never correct. And it is seriously annoying. Because this has been more than nine minutes. But it's almost done. So I'm going to bring the pan to the side of it. Make sure pan, the handle is not facing away. So you don't walk into it. And this is about good. And if it's a little too chewy for us, that's fine. But a cooking video can't be 10,000 years long. So, as always, do not drain your pasta. The only t you only drain your pasta for a couple of dishes. You almost never need to. Put the pasta in. The pasta can sizzle a bit when it goes in, but sometimes you'll actually be frying the pasta, which is not ideal. Pasta in. Get all of it. You can also use pancetta um, to boost a lot of other dishes. If you add it, you know, if you fry a pancetta before you put to tomato sauce in, you're basically making another famous uh, dish called pasta alla mexicana. So you can see, and look how the color of the, the pancetta fat is already on the spaghetti. So the heat's off, the flame's off. We're mixing this around. I'm just gonna ladle in a little bit of this pasta water, which again helps create the sauce and adds a little bit more salt. Mix it around. You always wanna mix. That's how you get a pasta to come together is when you mix it. And now we have the moment of truth. We add the eggs. It's always a little scary. And I think some people, this is why some people think that cabernet is hard to make. It's really not. It's just that this moment is a little scary. But if you killed the heat for a little bit, it should be fine. This is also why you have to heat your plate because the carbonara will not be that hot by the time you serve it. So you need a hot plate to keep it warm while you're eating it. So I think it's probably good. Sometimes I just do a ritual countdown, you know. Five, four, three, two, one. And in with the sauce. I want to get one of these rubber things to... Get it all in. And then watch. It's gonna come together with the pasta, with the water, with the oil, and it's gonna turn into a creamy sauce. Look at that. So you can see how it's creamifying. Not a lot. Again, it's not swimming in sauce, but you don't want it to. And I'm actually going to turn the heat on just low. Just get it a little bit more heat, not enough to scramble. But I just want the, so the sauce to get even a little bit thicker. I'm going to try to escape. Continuing to mix. I have my 
my suspicions that this is going to take a little bit of extra salt. And then, and don't be afraid to put salt in your food. I'm just going to have to touch up on them right now. Give it a bit of extra thickness. plates out. of those chunks of tension in there. It's not exactly a healthy dish. But a delicious one. That is good. It has spicy, a little bit of spice from the black pepper, that warmth. It has saltiness, it has fattiness. And it's very, very simple to make. So I'm with how to make uh, yeah, camera up. I'm talking. <laughs> That was how to make carbonara. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <I was about laughs> Thank you for watching.